Good morning. Welcome to Clean Right's first edition of their master class webinar. My name is Chip Kent, along with my brother Pat and our crew at Laurel. We manufacture the Laurel drop shelf vending machines at our factory in Chicago. Today we're going to show you ways to maintain, troubleshoot, and repair your vending machines. And also, we're going to show you how to upgrade your older electronic vending machines to the new current Digimax system. Feel free to send in any questions. This is a great time to do that. I'll try to answer them as best as possible. Um, just want to warn you, this is the first time we've ever tried to do a stream, so just bear with us. Um, we made up a few videos in advance to more clearly show the ways that we're going to go after these repair and maintenance items. They're only about five minutes long. So the first video encompasses our entire line of vending machines that we've made for over 50 years. Um, there's quite a few of the older ones still out there. These, this video will pertain to those, but it's worth watching. It will encompass the actual shelf drop action. Here we go. We're here with the Laurel drop shelf vending machine, fairly common looking one. I'm sure you've all seen it. The system, the drop shelf system was de developed by Laurel in 1970. Um, it's been refined, but essentially is identical to the system ba designed back then. Laurel is the only company that makes drop shelf vending machines. And today what I wanted to show you is some of the older machines will occasionally see shelf hanging up, not dropping cleanly, you know, like that. You might see the shelf come down partway and hang. Over many, many years, the wear that's associated with the metal from here to here can cause this problem. So today what I thought show you closely how to lubricate, carefully lubricate this area. So the system, the shelf has a latching wire. That's what sets the shelf. The edge of this piece of metal here, which I have a separate piece to show you, it's easier this way, but this, if you'll see, this, this piece here we call the latch bar is, is this. So what I'm going to show you is where to lubricate on this side. Okay? Before I do that, inside up here, we call these pieces the triggers. I don't know if anybody's ever had a machine apart, but that's what they are. These triggers operate by gravity. So we do not want to lubricate these pieces inside of here. You do not want to spray WD-40. You don't want to put big globs of grease or oil. They will end up causing a problem. That will end up causing a problem. So the type of grease that, that we like to use is called Super Lube. You find it on Amazon. It's a synthetic grease and holds up real well. For kind of a lighter grease. And I'll show you what it looks like here. So this is typically what we use to do any of the lubrication on our coin mechanisms or you know, in, in these older shelving units. The newer shelving units don't need this. We, we're talking shelving units that have been on the wall for 15 to 25 years. So what I'm going to show you is that, again, this piece, the latch bar, turn it on the side here. This area below the notch on all of these, this is where the, the latch wire, the wire for the shelf, will come up and rub against this before it snaps and then resets. So the wear area and the metal on metal is right here below each of these. Over time, we've noticed, talking to so many different car washes, that you have a tendency to use the certain area in the machine over and over again. You don't hear commonly that people use the whole 
shelves, and then they reset them all. They have a tendency to do 10, 12, 15 of them over and over. So these are the areas are that really are the ones that get you know, just raw over time, the metal on metal. And what we see is instead of the shelf dropping nice and cleanly as the wire runs down the edge of this, is that the, the, the wire will hang up part way, kind of like, again, like in here. It will hang up. And if you maybe bang the side of the machine, then it drops. So what I'm going to show you is where we like to see the lubrication. So again, this piece is the latch bars here. Take a, just a light amount of this super lube, tip of my finger. The best way to do it is to have all the shelves down because they're, they're, then they're not in the way. And then you can get at this, these areas. But I, here's where I would like to do this. Just a little bit of grease on the edge here, just a little bit, each one. You can do the entire 24 in a minute's time. What I, we don't want is we don't want to take a big glob of grease on the back side. That is an interfere possibly with the trigger. So we're just talking a slight amount. One of the things you can do, if you have a machine that you know that these shelves can be a problem, is that if you take a shelf and slowly bring it up, right about here is where you feel the tension of the edge of that latch wire on the edge of the latch bar, metal on metal. And over time, that's the raw area. So if you feel yours, if you pick an area of your machine where it's really rough, and you, know, you can just feel the roughness, Try this little bit of grease there, and then do that over and over. Put a little, go up and down a couple times, and you'll find that it really makes it slick. And even if you try to operate it very slow, shelf will drop cleanly. I think that covers it. So there is another option for dealing with an old shelf assembly that's just not working well. Buy a new one. CleanRight sells them for in the range of $80 to $100, depending on the model. They're very easy to replace. Those shelving units are held in a couple nuts at the top of the cabinet. So you buy yourself another 15 to 20 years trouble-free operation by doing that. Just another option. Sending those shelf assemblies into us to repair just doesn't make sense. They're too costly to ship due to their size. We can't really uh, do much to upgrade them as compared to uh, like the coin mechanisms. We get coin mechanisms sent every day. We fix them, few inexpensive parts, and they're almost as good as new. So coin mechanisms, um, we have some other resources for showing you how to repair them. CleanRight's got in their video library. They've got some videos that show how to disassemble and re reassemble these and put a few new parts in. This is CleanRight's video archive page, which you access from the resources tab at the top. Also, Laurel has a YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and in the search box put in Laurel Vending Machines, this will come up. We've got some videos on repair. We've got some videos to show you some of the other things we make. Okay, the next video we're going to show you how to upgrade your older electronic machines. These would be the ones that have the old green circuit board. So we're going to show you how to upgrade those to the new Digimax system. So um, if you happen to have these machines with the old green board, this video will be of interest to you. In this segment, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your older electronic Laurel 3 and 5 column vending machines to our newest Digimac style of circuit boards.
Around 20 plus years ago, we developed the original electronic machines. These all had these old school type of green colored circuit boards with the big components. This is a microprocessor that Motorola no longer makes. This display, that's this one here, no longer made. So these things can't be replaced anymore. So we, about five years ago, we needed to transition to the, a newer uh, board and we came up with the Digimax circuit board. So let me just show you these older boards. One of the first things that goes is the LED display. It starts to light up segments that are not supposed to be. If you notice that says pay and the next time it's going to say ray. Sometimes the, the one turns into an L and this is the very beginning of this display going bad. It gets worse and then you get to the point where you can't read it at all. So to upgrade to the Digimax board, you'll see that you're going to get a much larger LED display. It's a dot matrix style that scrolls words. Also this new board, the new Digimax board, has an extra plug in the back for CryptoPay, credit card systems, NIAX, etc. The credit card functionality is built into this new board. You don't have to do anything to make it active. Okay, so this is how we do it. The black plastic cover sheet, which is really a rain protector, has a small clear window, so we're going to get rid of that. Then, to remove the board, simply unplug the ribbon cable. Then, these two mounting screws you just need to be loosened. You don't need to remove them. That enables you to lift it up the coin mechanism frame we call it, lift it up and off to unplug the wire harnesses. So you unplug coin acceptor. This is the little motor that drives the coins, coin cup motor. And then the main wire harness. So it's probably easier to mount, drop this back in the machine. Now, to remove the old board, this board is just pressed straight on, so we're going to pull it right off. Using the plug at the top and the back, I'm using my fingers to press it off. In the bottom, you can just pull it off. Now, we just happen to have a Digimax board ready to go. So these boards fit in the same exact spot and you just press them, press the board back onto the four plastic posts in each corner. That locks it in. To plug in the harnesses, it's easier, again, if you lift up to and remove the Coimec frame to, for access. Now first, the main harness, same identical plug is the old board. A little coin cup motor plug. Coin, coin acceptor. And then last, the CryptoPay, which is optional, but we have it on this machine. I'll show you. Simply plug it in, and now the machine will take credit cards. Okay, plug the ribbon back in. The ribbon cable connects down to the touchpad. This is the touchpad. See, we're active and ready to go. The newer cover sheet, which has the larger clear window to see the new display, a double face tape on the top, comes with the retrofit kit. We just line it up on the left. That protects it. Nice bright display. The retrofit kit also will bring a new door. And the reason you need a new door, this right here is the size of the window in your existing older door. You can see it's going to cut off the new display. 
So the retrofit kit gives you a new door. So you're going to have a new decal, new door. It's going to look like a brand new machine. And this is what the new door brings. The bigger window to fully see the new display. And as you can see, the CryptoPay became active when I plugged it in. And the new Digimax board recognizes it and also now adds coins or credit card. I think that covers it. So there are plenty of machines still out there working just fine with these old green boards. The thing that we see, the, the first thing that does start to go is that LED display. And there's times when you can't read anything on it, but the machine still functions. Sometimes people let them go till they are you know, completely un illegible. That's fine. It's just sooner or later, they will need to be changed out, and then you don't have to change out the whole machine. You don't have to buy a new machine. You can just upgrade to the new boards because we made them so they could fit right in the same spot. They're the same size, same wire harnesses, everything. So it's fairly easy to change out. The new Digimax circuit boards do offer a little more. Um, the next video I'm going to show a little bit more about the programming steps and show what are some of the features in the new board. In the previous video we mentioned the upgrade to Digimax for your 3-column or 5-column machines. Included with the upgrade kit is a handy programming decal which we stick on the inside of the front door so that it always stays with the machine. Instruction manuals, as we all know, have a tendency to disappear. So, I'm going to step through the choices and options that are in here. The, and each one is stepped through by the mode button. That's how you walk through the entire list. So, first one, language selection. Currently, it's in English. We can, using the up button, go to Spanish only or English, Spanish alternating, which is fairly handy. There's also a number of foreign. Final one is Russian. So now I'm going to use the down button, bring it back down to the bottom of the list, which is English. Next, currency symbol, primarily used for overseas. So this would be the second step of the mode button. The default would be the dollar symbol. You can have no symbol, euro, etc. Typically kept in the, for the states, kept in the dollar sign. Okay. Next step, price change. Display prompts us that we need to tell it which selection button to change. So let's start with the first one. Current price will appear. Now you can change the price. That 50 cents, we can go up to a buck. We can walk over to the next button, change this. Next of the mode button, next selection, display brightness. Two choices. We have low and high, also sometimes referred to as indoor or outdoor. All right, next. A mode button will bring up the vend counter. This is where we keep a running tally of the shelf drops for each individual column. To see what the uh, setting is, first one, you can see there's been nine vends in column number one, middle column, 17. So this is a non-resettable counter. You can keep inventory control and we have it non-resettable so an attendant can't clear it out on you. Last is choose payment type. Currently it's set at both, which is coin or credit card acceptance. We can cycle up to credit card only, where coins are not accepted, just credit card payment, or coin only. If I were to press the mode again, the multiple beeps signals we are done and we're out of the programming. I think that's it. Okay, next, let's get into the 
single column vending machines and the upgrade to the new Digimax system. So here is the look of the older style one, which you'll notice with the, we have the black cover. These, these covers we made um, to pr protect the boards from water. If you you're outside and you're filling the machine and it starts to rain, we don't want any water to hit the circuit board. So that's, we call it the circuit board cover. So the old ones, get the green, the green board behind there, old black cover. Old black cover has the small, little clear window for the old small display. So it's start changing, first remove the cover, then the circuit board, unplug the main harness, and the board itself, just like the, the three and the five, is just pressed straight on, so we're just going to pull it straight off from the bottom, and then from the back, you can push it off. So, the old green board, then the new Digimax board for the single column machines, sorry, we made blue. So we made these a separate color so it is easier for us to help you when you call in and need technical help. The color will give us you know, the clue of which board it is. So to install the board, simply place it right on the, the four posts, four plastic pins in the corner, and then you press the board, you seat it, and then the new cover, the new cover, blue with the big clear window for the new bigger display, the Digimax display. We got double face tape on the top. Let's see if I can do this from the back. Stick it on, and you're good. That's pretty much it. Now, one thing I want to show you is how simple it is to add CryptoPay to your machine. You notice these boards, the new boards, all have a separate plug and that's for CryptoPay. You see the display right now saying pay dollar insert coins. So watch what happens when we plug in CryptoPay. take a little bit for the two items to communicate with each other and then the display instead of saying insert coins only pay a dollar we'll see insert coins or credit card Get my hand out of the way it's as simple as that okay we have a question um, oh, there's a question coming in Teddy's yeah. gonna fire it off to me yes does that coin acceptor take multiple coins other than only quarters? So okay, good question. In this, we in our in all of our machines, we have um, multiple options of coin acceptors. This one is the Slug Buster, the P48 Slug Buster. This one will take just quarters only. You you, know, you put you put a sample quarter right in this spot here. If you have a token only wash, you put a token in there, and it'll take tokens only. Other two options, IDX MA850. This will take quarters. It comes to your program for quarters, dollar coins, and then if you have tokens, you can program those in. We also offer the MicroCoin QL, which comes programmed for quarters, dollar coins, and can take um, many others too. You can program in multiple tokens. Um, MicroCoin QL is becoming more popular. Um, we consider it probably the least likely to have a problem of all the ones we use. Um, they've been around a long time. We've, I think, started uh, over 15 years ago using them. Not the uh, next video we have will show you how to maintain the motors in your machine, access them, uh, lubricate them, etc. In this segment, we're going to focus on a part that we call the switch pad. The switch pad probably is the most common thing when people call in with repair issues. 
that we have to discuss. Troubleshooting the switchpad is fairly simple. When you go to push any of the five buttons, you have to get a beep. If you touch a button and there is no beep, that would indicate something is wrong with the switch pad. They should all... So, you have a dead button, time to replace the switch pad. Fairly easy to do. Before we replace it, I want to show you something. When you close your door with the current switch pad, take a look to see if all of the push buttons are perfectly aligned in the center because when we put the new pad on, we can adjust its location so that we get the push buttons perfectly centered. So, fairly simple way to do this is, prior to peeling off the pad, use a marker, mark all corners of the current pad. That will give us an alignment tool when we install the new pad. So, to replace, simply unplug the ribbon cable pad itself is just stuck to the metal plate, so there's nothing to remove here. Replacement, switch pad, peel off the backing for the adhesive, and this is where we'll use our alignment guide to install the new one. Put it right there, and prior to pressing this on firmly against the metal plate, in case we need to move it, let's take a look and see if we have the alignment. Just a tad off, it needs to go to the right just a tad. So, since we have it adhered it perfectly, we can take it off, give it a little bit to the right. Now, test it. That's a little bit better. Test your new pad. Simply checking. And you're happy with that? Stick it on, but good? You're ready to go. Simple. Okay, um, apologize, we had a, a little mix up in the videos. That one obviously had to do um, not with the motors, but with the switch pad, which is likely the most common part that you would have to replace on that three or five column machine. It's um, fairly simple to do, as you can see. So we uh, wanted to just kind of, you know, give you the idea that you know, get the thing, you know, you have to replace it, get it on just perfectly because you know, might as well, you get one chance to do it when you're putting it on, might as well get it perfect. So the um, video we're going to show now, which I mentioned prior, is um, accessing the motors in our machine, the motors that run the shelf drop, the motor that runs the coin cup that drops the money into the coin box. Um, if you have issues with those, uh, they're not super complicated to access, the video will clearly show you how to do it. In this video, we're going to focus on the motors used in our machines to run the shelf drop and also run the coin drop. Show you how to pull them out, lubricate them, reinstall. So first, we'll go after the shelf drop motors which are located individually behind each of the three columns. So, to access the, the motor, the, the bend motor for this one, we have to take the shelf unit out. Fastened at the top, two nuts. I have the, just the one on here loose for the video purpose. Then there is one screw, bottom of the column, remove that. There's a wire harness to the left of the column which we unplug. And then, to move, remove the shelf 
we tip it off the thread studs at the top, lift it straight up, and pull it out. This gives us access to the vent motor for the shelf drop, held on by two screws in the front, no fasteners at the back. Get at this and show you how to put a little lubrication on it. Okay. The vent motor has a round metal stud that spins around. It's pushing the shelf unit back and forth on these two flanges. Over an extended period of time, you might need to put a little bit of grease on it so it moves a little smoother. We just use a little bit of super lube, dab it on the outside of the cam. When it spins around, it'll get on both sides. Reinstalling, fairly simple. Just put it, push the motor straight back on. You don't need to do any alignment. Tighten the screws. And then we'll reinstall the magazine assembly. Okay, to install the magazine assembly, what we're looking to do is this tab at the bottom, we are putting that inside this slit in the back of the cowl. That's the key thing that locates it. So, okay, I'm watching in the back of the column to get that tab and that slit. Boom, dropped right in. Remember to plug in the wire harness. Okay, don't forget to put the fasteners back on top and the screw in at the bottom. And that's it. Next, to access the coin drop motor, unplug the ribbon cable. I have these two fastening screws loose already to simply re remove the coin mechanism. We'll get it out of the way. Stick it over here on the right. The coin cup motor assembly is snapped into this metal plate. Two yellow tabs sticking through are the fasteners. The rear tab is the one with a little force forward while pulling the cup off to the right, it should pop it right off. Put a finger behind it, a little force. Removed. This is the coin cup motor assembly. To reinstall it, this tab will go in first, and then the flexible tab will be will follow. I might have to get in the way just a little bit to, to show, but basically what we do first is get the front tab in position, and then we have to put some force to get that back one to snap in that way. So just pop it in like that. Remount coin mechanism. Tighten the two screws, and you're good to go. I think that's it. All right, that's the last of the pre-recorded videos. This is a, a reminder that if you have any questions, we have some time. So send in the questions, and we'll try to answer all of them. Um, we. Uh, talked a little bit earlier about the repairing parts. Um, coin mechanisms are sent into us frequently. We typically repair them within a day. Um, our, our turnaround on other items is you know, just about as fast. So to send anything into us, really all you need to do is put a note in the carton with your return name and address. We don't process credit cards, so we don't need your credit card information. We're just going to fix it and we're going to mail you a bill or email it would be better. Um, so this is inexpensive um, repair. Uh, let's show you the address if you'd like to send anything in to us. Okay, question.
question? Yeah. There is a question. Um, are the plastic tabs available in the retrofit kit? Possibly referring to the plastic tabs on the motor. So the question, uh, uh, the motors all have the two yellow tabs that are built into the motor case. That's how they snap in and out of the framework. So yes, all the motors come, the tab is part of the motor. The question from sent in. Any other questions? Oh, one of the things, um, since we have enough time, one of the things is that, you know, usually Pat and I are the ones that answer when you call in and look for some help. Um, lately, uh, meaning the last like three months, um, you might have called and not gotten us um, immediately. We usually try to, you know, get, get answer all these calls, but we had a, a little bit of a, a windstorm hit our factory. So, show you the, yeah. So it, it was a, uh, what they call an F1 tornado, 110 miles an hour, and it tried to take that roof up and off of our building, and it just really destroyed a lot of stuff inside. So we've been, we've been um, operating in a different world lately, and so we've actually got our, our, uh, our offices are now in the factory area, so because um, we are rebuilding everything. So if you call in and it's noisy because you hear, you know, the punch presses working in the background, well, unfortunately, we can't do anything about that at the moment. But soon enough, we'll be back up and running. Um, should be another maybe two months, hopefully. So, okay. a question? Got another question. On the five column machine, why do I occasionally get an E-1 error message? Okay, good question. So the, the E-1 error message is associated with the green circuit boards. And that E1 is like an error message and it's coming from the specific motor for the specific column. If that motor for some reason doesn't finish its revolution in the proper amount of time, it takes too long, it gets jammed, something happens, it burns out, which is not too likely, but for some reason if that motor doesn't finish its revolution, what we do is we have the coin cup motor return the coins to the customer. Since we're holding it there, we're waiting for that shelf motor to finish. And then we put that column out of, temporarily out of order and, and that E1 code comes up when you touch the, prep, the push button. So to clear that code out and test it to see if it'll work is on the circuit board, the up and down buttons, these two buttons, you press the two of them simultaneously. That will clear all error codes out. It, you know, if there's more than one, it'll take them all out. And then you can put some money in and test vend that same column. Many times it'll work. It could be just the motor just barely missed finishing its revolution in the time that we give it. So if it were to come back, if you were to try to vend that column again and that E1 were to come back, then the issue might be motor replacement is necessary. So, good question. That's it right now. No, no other no questions. questions. So, right all right. Um, well, I think that does it for us. Um, thank you again for watching Clean Rights' first ever master class webinar. Good idea to put that up. Back on. All right, we're back. We got another question to answer. Okay. Um, where can you find the different codes? What are the different uh, codes? The codes, the error codes, um, would be listed in the instruction manual for the machines. And there's a good chance you don't have that manual anymore. All of the manuals are available on our website. CleanRight has them on their website too. Um, also, there's some troubleshooting guides too uh, in, on the on the website. Um, so, if you're looking for the, the you know the other error codes are the um, for the older green boards, it'd be a 
ESC comes up. ESC stands for the escrow motor cup. That's the term that was used for that coin cup motor assembly. If that one doesn't rotate properly, it jams, it burns up, we shut that down and ESC because it's the old green boards that display was very difficult to get any words on it so escrow reason is we're holding your quarters in escrow until we know you get your product then the coins go into the coin box so that's the ESC code um, the newer Digimax uh, since we can scroll words across the screen it will say problem with column one or problem with column four and that be the refer to the individual columns um, if the coin cup motor fails in the new uh, Digimax system the display will say out of order come back later again these are available on our in the instruction manuals and you can access this on our website the troubleshooting guide on the Digimax machine also has some more information about some optional programming it's a little too much to get into here but there are some optional programs that are built into the Digimax boards okay um, another question uh, he's only ever seen the E1 message on five column machine is it unique to the five column machine or is it you know, you could, could you possibly see it in other ones the E1 error code, again, is only with the old green boards, and it can be on the three column machine too. If, if the motor that runs the shelf drop for the center column burns up and you press that button it will, and it says E1, then yes, it, it, you know, it, it pertains to both three column and five column machines. Okay, I've got another one, might be a little bit too general to answer here, but we'll try. Um Shelf not dropping. There's no error code. Um, if you push the button, it's just going to—it just shows the price. Okay, that would be one that I think you should probably call me or my brother Pat when you're right in front of the machine. That's have, and have some quarters in hand. Be ready to go, and then we can walk through. It's—it's it's probably something that would take a little bit of back and forth to figure that one out. But I think we can. Okay. Another question: Is Laurel Vendor compatible with laundry? Yes, if um, the laundry soap boxes do fit on the shelves and our, our machines, the drop shelf system is set for whatever product you can fit on the shelf will vend. Ketchup pack, armor all pad, or a Tide box. Um, Clean right sells uh, the machine. There's a three column machine for laundromats. They've made up a nice decal for all the vending products, the Tide, the Clorox, et cetera. Um, and the boxes fit perfectly and vend perfectly in that machine. So yes. I think that might have been the end of the questions at the moment. Again, call us and uh, we'll get, we'll help you out. Thank you very much.